What's up, gang? This is Ken Zerk, Ken Zilligan, Zika Milligan, the Villa Villa Trilla Gang, and we are back on Face Day Night. Man, my dang editing software was tripping yesterday, so I wasn't able to freaking get the video out in time. But you know, I was I, I was I was able to catch up a good amount to a show I like, so I guess that was good. We're on day four. Last episode, I, I guess Shiro died. <laughs> I don't. I'm not too sure what happened, all right? All I know is that, all I know is that Shiro got his abdomen ripped off, I guess, and Ilya was like, you're fucking stupid, dipshit. So I guess Shiro's dead. We're waking up as Ren Tosaka. No fucking clue what's going on, by the way. Just want to get that out the way. Time for day four. Partner. Partner. What up, partner? What up, partner? That's how my dad says it. What up, partner? Winter, five years ago. It was a beautiful Tsukihime moonlit night. I was just enjoying the sight with my father. Oh, we're Shiro. It was a beautiful moonlit night. I was just enjoying the sight with my father, Kiritsugu Emiya. It was winter, but it wasn't very cold. On the veranda, it was just a little chilly. The perfect weather to watch the moon. Kiritsugu didn't go outside much anymore. He rarely went out, and he spent most of his time lounging around the house. Every time I recall this, I still feel regret. Why didn't I realize that he was acting the way any creature does when they know their time is almost up? When I was a boy, I wanted to be a champion of justice. He blurted it out, just out of nowhere. My father, who already seemed like a champion of justice in my eyes, said that as if he were reflecting on a memory. What, you wanted to? So you gave up on it? I asked, unable to completely hide my disappointment. Hiritsugu smiled apologetically and looked up at the distant moon. Unfortunately, yes. You can only be a hero for so long. It gets harder to call yourself one as you grow up. I wish I'd find that out later. Found, I wish I'd found that out earlier. That made sense to me. I wasn't sure why, but if Kiritsugu said it, then it had to be true. Oh well. That's too bad. Yes, it really is too bad. Kiritsugu nodded in agreement. So I just kind of blurted something out, as if it were a natural thing to say. Okay, if you can't do it, then I'll do it for you. You can't do anything because you're an adult, but I can. You can leave your dream to me. Because I'll make it a reality. The bold promise made my father smile. His face said everything I needed to know. Hiritsuga made a long, contented sigh and whispered, Ah. That's a relief. There he closed his eyes, and so too his life came to a close. Oh, he died right there! He looked so peaceful, like he was just going to wake up in the morning, so I didn't think much about it. Maybe it was because by then I was used to seeing death. On a winter night, the man I called my father looked up at the moon and entered a long sleep. The yard was dead silent. Not so much as a single chirp from an, inse from an insect. I still remember how fiercely my eyes blazed on that bright, clear night. I didn't cry aloud, nor did I feel sad. But tears flowed down my cheek until the moon sank past the horizon. Damn. This happened in the winter five years ago. I probably cried ten years worth of tears in that time. So after that, there was nothing left. Fujine's dad took care of the funeral arrangements, and that's how I ended up living in the Emiya mansion all alone. Hiritsugu's passing didn't change anything for me. I was suddenly becoming a man who champions justice and does what's right, just like my father, so I didn't have time to sit around. That's right. I never talk about this, but I still remember it. Ten years ago, a man saved me from a fire. He picked up a burned, dying child and carried him out of hell, weeping with joy. I've admired him ever since. Nobody saved me. I couldn't save anyone. 
in the ruins of the fire, there was only a boy who was saved and a man who saved him. That's why I aspired to be like him. I wanted to become a hero of justice that saves people and doesn't let anyone die. That's who he wanted to be, and he passed his wish onto me before quietly letting the curtain fall. It's only natural for a child to follow their father's footsteps. Shiro Emiya must become a hero of justice and save someone the same way that he was once saved. I swore to myself I would do it. I vowed to fulfill the dream of the man I most admired. But honestly, I didn't know how. What did Kiritsuku mean by doing the right thing and championing justice? How can I grow up faster? There's some magical way to make Kiritsuku's dream of making everyone happy come true? Seriously, what am I supposed to do when I become a master and I can't get the blonde girl with me out of my head? So you want to look me in my motherfucking face and tell me that I survived? Okay. Bullshit, bullswag, man. It smells like horse cock. Come on. That's some bullshit. Shiro's dead. He should not have survived. I'm not going to complain because... <laughs> it, <laughs> hey, man. At, at least that means I didn't make the wrong choice, right? I wake up in my room. Something tastes terrible. It's probably iron. The steely tang of blood clouds my mouth. I knew it. It pulled in my mouth while I slept. And every time I breathed, heavy metallic air filled my lungs. I'm not sure why I feel this way. A violent urge to vomit makes me want to go wash my face in the restroom. Okay. I lift myself out of bed. Oh, shit! Dizzy, uh, oh, dizziness sets my head spinning. He's low on that iron. Feeling uneasy on my feet, I plant a head against I plant a hand on the wall. I try to move, but it only makes the nausea worse. No, it's more pain than nausea. My body feels sluggish, and my insides seem to churn whenever I move. I imagine this is what it's what it'd feel like if someone forced hot lead down my throat. Ugh, imagining that is making me feel like I'm gonna run a fever. I wipe the sweat from my forehead and hobble out of my room. Leaning against the wall. Okay. I feel a little better. I wash my face and dry off my sweat-drenched body. Huh? For some reason, my abdomen is wrapped in bandages. I have no idea why, but I'll deal with it later. I'm hungry. Did I leave any food in the fridge? My stomach feels like it's churning, but my body needs nourishment. I suck up the discomfort and keep walking, brace against the wall. The dizziness won't go away, and worst of all, my b whole body feels dull. I keep moving forward, making pathetic noises along the way. What the hell did I do before I went to bed last night? I don't remember training strenuously enough to make my entire body ache. I reach the living room. Sakura and Fujine must be at school. There's no signs of breakfast, nor do I see any remnants of Fujine wrecking the place. The living room is quiet, like a typical, what the fuck are you doing in my crib? Morning, sorry I came in without asking, Emiya. A typical Sunday, or fucking not. What, huh? Rinso Saki is sitting on the floor by the table in the living room. She's so calm like she owns the place, so much that I feel like a guest in here. I've got no clue what to say, so I'll plop down on a cushion. And then I take a deep breath, deep breath. Tosaka, why are you... Stop. Shouldn't you apologize to me first? I can't move on from last night until you say sorry for what you did. I, I can't even finish asking why she's in my house. Tosaka's glare is all I need to know how, she is all I need to know how angry she is. She seems upset about something that happened last night, but what exactly? Wait, I remember now. Right, this isn't a time for me to be leisurely breathing in the morning air. I tried to help Saber and Berserker gutted me like a fish. The nausea returns. A chill grips my entire body as I remember the feeling of having a gaping hole in my body. Wait, that's weird. I should have died instantly. That's weird. 
why am I still here? Do you remember now? You did something damn stupid last night. I hope you regret it. Osaka huffs critically. That kind of ticks me off. My brain, frozen since seeing Tosaka in my living room, finally grinds into action. What the fuck are you talking about? I had no choice. Well, sure, it might seem like an idiot movie. You should look at the results. But I definitely meant for it to go better than it did. So I wouldn't say it was a mistake, bitch. I return her glare, insisting that I'm not an idiot. No, you're a fucking idiot. I know. I, I know I'm the one who made you do it. I selected the option. But you're a fucking idiot for listening to me. Like, I'm stupid as hell. Why would you do what I tell you to do? Dumbass. What? Why is she making such a show of sighing at me? If the master dies, the servant disappears too, remember? I can't believe you actually tried to shield your own servant. Listen, if you die, then Saber is gone too. If you wanted to save Saber, you should have thought of another way to do it from a safe distance, you dumb fuck. Honestly, do you realize how pointless it is to risk your own life for your servants, you dumb bitch? I wasn't shielding her. I was just trying to get her out of there. I didn't think that would happen to me. I knew I might die if I got near a monster like that, but that's besides the point. Fine, then you had the wrong idea. So Sokka only looks more irritated, like she knows exactly what I'm thinking. I'll be straight with you, Emiya. I didn't take you to the church so that you could win. I was just trying to give you a chance to survive because you literally don't know anything. It sounds like you still don't fucking get it. A chance to survive. Yeah. I figured you wouldn't take risks or really do much if you knew defeat meant death. But it looks like you're the kind of person to walk out at night even in a situation like this. I thought if that if I scared you straight, you wouldn't throw your own life away for someone else. And if you're lucky, you'd make it until the end. I see. That didn't cross my mind. But why are you upset? What does me dying have to do with you? It has everything to do with me. Because you made me worry all night long. Oh, how sweet. So Sokka's practically throwing a tantrum, <laughs> but okay. It actually feels good to have someone worry about me. From her tone, it sounds like Osaka was the one who took care of me. What a sweetheart. Is that so? Guess I owe you once, Osaka. Thanks. I bow my head in appreciation and apology. As long as you understand. If you if you learn your lesson, then use your head next time. Osaka quickly turns away. She might still be edgy, but I feel like she's in a better mood. Then we're done with what happened last night. Let's get down to it. Do you want to talk business or talk about yesterday? Huh? Osaka prompts me matter-of-factly. The straightforwardness takes me off guard, but now that I think about it, she must be here only to because she has something to discuss. If she hadn't had something to discuss, she'd have gone home already. Tosaka's my enemy, so what could she have to talk about that would prompt her to stay in enemy territory? I'm curious to know what she's thinking, and I also want to know what else happened last night. I have to ask anyway, so... Guess let's talk about yesterday. There's no point in talking until I understand my own situation. I need to understand where I am before I try to get where I'm going. That's the basics for a journey. Let's start with what happened yesterday. Yeah, you should know what's going on first. Hey, looks like you're finally thinking straight. With a smug grin, Osaka launches into a brief explanation of last night's events. Apparently, Berserker, hold on, I need water. Hey guys. In classic Zeke faction, faction, this ain't the Lin Kuei. In classic Zeke fashion, my dumbass forgot to eat, so I'm getting hungry now. Let's keep playing. Apparently, Berserker left right after I lost consciousness. Afterwards, my body started to heal on its own, and it was back to normal after a few minutes. That makes no fucking sense. I was still on. 
I was still unconscious, so Sosaka brought me here and the rest was as I remember it. What's important here is that you managed to survive on your own. I might have helped a bit, but it was your power that healed your wound. So don't get that twisted, okay? That's what it sounds like from the way you told it. So you weren't the one who healed me? No way. I can't revive someone on the verge of death. What was I supposed to do about your intestines scattered on the pavement? I don't really have an answer to that. My stomach is back to normal, yes, but I'm honestly still dubious about what Tosaka said. I can't even use any healing magecraft, much less raise the dead. Which means it must be your servant. Either your servant is pretty powerful or something happened when you summoned them. I think it's both actually, but you must be connected by some line. Line? You mean some sort of fate stay night line that connects a familiar to it and his mage? Oh, so you do have some knowledge of familiars. Then this should be easy. It means your relationship with Sha Saber is not just an ordinary master and familiar relationship. Saber can evidently regenerate too, so her power might be flowing into you. Normally, the mage's abilities are shared with the familiar, but in your case, the familiar's abilities are helping the master. So it's like a river flowing upstream. That's a good way of putting it. Normally that wouldn't be possible, but Saber's magical energy must be powerful enough to change the flow of a river. Otherwise, there's no chance she'd be able to go up against a berserker with that tiny frame of hers. It wouldn't normally be possible. Does that mean your relationship with Archer is a normal mage and familiar relationship? That's right. He doesn't listen to a word I say, but that's our relationship. The connection between master and servant is like gas in an engine. We provide the energy for them to consume. Though, I've read that a master once acquired pseudo-immortality by physically fusing with their servant. They wouldn't die as long as their servant doesn't die. Are you listening, Emiya? The fuck? The fuck? If that happened in Fate Zero, I do not remember that shit. <laughs> if that happened in Fate Zero, I do not remember that shit. <laughs> if that happened in Fate Zero, I do not remember that shit. <laughs> huh? Yeah, I am. Then Tosaka, does that mean my body will heal from injuries even if I don't do anything about them? At the cost of your servant's magical energy. I don't know how it works, but it definitely has something to do with Saber being stuck in material form. I don't think you've learned any curses of natural regeneration. Of course not. Oh man, never tell me something that complicated. It's not what I mean. I'm saying I wouldn't have had to worry this much if it was true. Never mind, this doesn't concern you. Negates my life, huh? What does she mean? I wonder why Tosaka's being so roundabout. Anyway, just don't do anything rash. You might have survived this time, but you might not live to tell the tale next time you get hurt like, like last night. It's probably best to just ditch the notion that any small wounds will heal on their own. I know. Saber had to help me because I went and got myself hurt. I don't have any excuses for that. That's not the point, dumbass. Let me be clear, it costs more than Saber's energy to heal your wounds. You're giving something up when it happens. Humanity, hold on. Whether that's your life, your luck, or even your bank account, you can bet that kind of healing doesn't come cheap. Tosaka huffs once again. And I agree, but... Tosaka... I don't think my bank account has anything to do with it. Of course it does! Using Magecraft means you're practically throwing away your money. The more you use it, the more it drains your money. Otherwise, none of this would be acceptable. Especially to me. Did you rob me, bitch? Oh, shit. Hey, my fault. You got it. You got it. So Sokka absolutely explodes with fury. She's got it. It's odd, really. The more I talk to her, the more does Tosaka feel like the real one. While the girl at school feels like an act. Though I guess I already noticed that yesterday. And I'm finna get some of this Mizu, this dang 
H2O. Well, putting the topic of money aside, I want to talk about something serious. Are you ready, Emiya? This is the main reason you're here, isn't it? Let's hear it. Then I'll be frank. What do you plan to do next? Sasaka asked the one question I hoped she wouldn't. Actually, that's not entirely true. It's not that I don't want her to ask so much as I haven't really thought of my answer yet. What am I going to do now? It's the question I want to ask. To be honest, I don't know. I know there's a competition for the Holy Grail, but I've never been in a battle between mages. For one thing, I... More than anything, I want to avoid any killing. I'm not interested in something like the Holy Grail. I don't really... I don't really know if I can risk my life for something I don't want. I knew you'd say something like that. I have you know that your servant will kill you for saying that sort of thing. Huh? Kill me? Why? Because the servants also seek the Holy Grail. One of the conditions for allowing a master to summon them is getting a chance at the Holy Grail. The Grail is the servant's number one priority. They'll obey the masters if it gives them a chance at the Grail. Sometimes they'll even die for their masters. Try saying you don't want the grail to your servant. You can blame her if she calls you a traitor and cuts you down where you stand. What the hell? That doesn't sound right. Servants are the ones who are summoned by masters, right? Then... Did you think servants would really serve humans for free? Whoever acquires the grail gets their wish granted. Whether that's a master or their guardian servant. The servant has the first servants have wishes of their own. That's why they respond to summons that would otherwise be at best unreasonable. Masters don't summon servants to help them get the Holy Grail. Servants answer the master's call to have a chance at the Holy Grail. The servants have wishes too. Does that mean Saber also has a wish she wants granted by the Holy Grail? That's why servants will go out and eliminate other masters even without being ordered to. Only one person can get the Holy Grail. They won't allow it to fall into the hands of anyone other than their own master. Unlike masters, servants don't have the power to take away command spells. The only way they can neutralize other masters is by killing them. So even if the master has no intention of fighting, conflict is inevitable. Masters attacked by a servant needs to fight off with their own servant. Kirei told you, Kirei told you plenty of, Kirei told you plenty of times about how that is at the heart of the Holy Grail War. Kirei yeah, told me enough about that shit last night. But it just means that servants must fight and kill each other. I thought it would have been enough as long as the masters made peace with each other and gave up the Holy Grail. But if servants answers the summons because they also seek the Holy Grail and will never give up until they have it, then battles between servants really are inevitable. But then, is the girl who fought so hard to protect me also here to fight, kill four, and maybe die all for the Holy Grail? That's awful. I don't know exactly what a heroic spirit is, but Saber's human. I even saw her bleed yesterday. Oh, don't worry about that. Servants are immortal, so if they die, they'll just go back to where they came from. Heroic spirits are a phenomenon that can't die. Only masters can actually get killed when they lose a fight. No, I mean, even if their deaths are figurative, it doesn't change the fact that something which takes the form of a human dies in this world. What, you have some hang up with killing? You've got some nerve calling yourself a maze with morals like that. Osaka's right. As a maze, death is never far. I understand that fact and I've long since resigned myself to it. But I'm not strong enough to be the judge of when and where other people should live or die. Of course I do. I won't be party to some war where people murder each other, man. Oh, really? So you're just gonna sit and wait to be killed? 
You're gonna just hand the victory over to some other master? It's not my point. All I have to do is stay alive until the end, right? I don't intend to kill anyone, but I'm also not gonna hold back if I need to defend myself. Someone who shows up ready to kill others can't complain about getting killed. So you're gonna play defense? It's just gonna watch and see what other masters do. Even if that thing from yesterday goes around killing everyone in town, you'll just ignore it. The thing from yesterday. That twisted inhuman demon. Strong enough to level a house with a single blow. If it set its mind to it, I'm sure it could destroy all of Miyama overnight. To make matters worse, servants can turn into spirit form. Humans who lack the ability to sense the supernatural can't even see them. But as soon as servants materialize, they can interact with the physical world. You could say they are the ultimate weapons. No modern technology or weaponry can affect the spiritual form. Our attacks don't work on them, but they can hurt us. This is a perfectly one-sided arrangement. From a normal person's point of view, servants may as well be natural disasters. When people die to an invisible killer, those deaths will be treated as accidents or natural causes. What do you mean? Don't servants... I, I mean... Don't masters and servants only attack other masters? What do the people in town have to do with it? If only the world were so peaceful. If that was the case, then we need, wouldn't need Kirei to play referee. I should have mentioned this sooner, but servants are spirits. Their forms are complete static, so they do not grow. But they still need magical energy as fuel. When they're provided with more magical energy, they're able to use more of the special abilities they had when they were alive. That's not unlike us mages, actually. Do you see where I'm getting? Do you see what I'm getting at? Yeah. It's like repeatedly using magecraft. Magical energy is like gunpowder. The mage is the gun itself. Like how there are different guns, pistols, rifles, shotguns. Mages all have a variety of abilities. To continue the metaphor, servants are more like artillery cannons and firearms. They burn a huge amount of gunpowder to match launch massive spells, massive shells. That's right. But servants can't draw mana from the atmosphere like us. They generally run only on the magical energy within them. It's our job as masters to supplement that energy. Their power is limited by their own energy supply, plus whatever their masters give them. That means a half-baked master like you has no chance against a more capable master, right? One very obvious solution to that hurdle is to have your servant acquire magical energy from other sources. Servants are spirits, so they can eat similar stuff for sustenance. Eating something similar? You mean other spiritual bodies? What kind of spirits would they eat? Simple. Spirits of nature can take in power from nature itself. So what do you think servants who are human spirits get power from? Oh shit. It really is an easy question. Since we eat meat, human spirits like servants have to eat. Correct. To be fair, the magical energy supply from masses chosen by the Holy Grail should be enough in most cases. But shouldn't it be obvious that they gain more energy by getting it from more than one person? Bluntly speaking, inferior masters have to feed other have to feed other people to their servants. Servants can convert souls and primal human emotions into magical energy. If you want your servant to get stronger, that's the most efficient way. It's not rare for masters to sacrifice humans to their servant. Sacrifice. Are you saying there might be masters out there who go around killing people to make their servants stronger? If they're not choosy about their methods? Maybe. But I can't see a smart master doing something like that. No matter how strong a servant is, they're still limited by energy capacity. They can't store any energy above a hard limit, so there's only so much they can benefit from mass murder. 
For one thing, the association will turn a blind eye to someone going around murdering people. But more importantly, the other masters will be able to figure out the servant's abilities and identity based on the victim's cause of death. That and they'll work out the other master's identity too. Concealing your identity in the Holy Grail War gives you a big advantage, so any normal master would be unwilling to use their servant. I get it. If you don't let anyone know you're a master, then the other masters won't attack you. Conversely, if the other masters know who you are, they're just asking to be ambushed. It stands to reason that no one would be reckless enough to let their servant attack civilians and risk getting exposed. Well, that's a relief. As long as a master does an order, his servant shouldn't indiscriminately attack people. Probably not. They're supposed to be heroes after all. I don't think there are any heroes who'd attack innocent people, though I can't say that for sure. Plenty of them became heroes through sheer violence. So Sokka just casually raises a truly terrifying point. That she sounds so genuine about it, rather than sarcastic or ironic, might be a reflection of her twisted nature. We're getting off topic. So, what's next for you? You claim you won't kill people. So aren't you going to stand by and watch the other masters do God knows what? I take it back. She's not only twisted. She's a fucking jerk who, who's going out of her way to drive me into a corner all with a damn smile. If it comes to that, I'll go in and stop them. The master won't have much to do as long as his servant has been defeated, right? Unbelievable. So you're not going to try and defeat any of the other masters unless they intend to do bad things. Do you even hear yourself? Yeah, I know. I know that's just pretty words, but I can't think of anything else. I'm not changing my principles no matter what you say. Real shit. This just one problem. Should I spell it out for you? I can see the gears turning in her head. She's up to something. But I promised to listen, so I need to hear her out. Do you remember the master from yesterday? The little girl who just casually ordered her servant to kill us both? How can I forget? She attacked us on our way home without any warning. She is definitely going to come back and kill us. I'm sure even you've worked that out. Alright, that girl's a master too. She knows that Tosaka and I are both masters, so she's bound to come after us eventually. It could be today or tomorrow, but we've already signed our death warrants. I've no choice of stopping that I have no chance of stopping that monster. Her servant, Berserker, is on a whole nother level. As an experience of a master you are, you are no match for that thing. And you've been saying you're gonna protect yourself by doing nothing. You are not going to be able to defend yourself. Look who's talking. You've got no chance against that thing either. Fucking bitch. Not in a straight up fight, but that's the ultimate of close quarter servant. That's the ultimate close quarter servant. There's probably isn't anyone who can match who can match it, even among all the heroes of myth and legend. If Berserker attacks me, there's no escape. That goes for me too. I'm pretty sure I won't survive the next round with that thing. My hand moves unconsciously to my stomach. The wound is closed. It's probably not even fair to call this a wound. It's a spot where a gigantic sword nearly killed me instantly. I can't shake off the sudden wave of nausea that wells up in me when I imagine the next time I might get a taste of that blade. There you have it. Do you get that just standing around, doing nothing, and waiting for the Holy Grail War to end isn't an option? Yeah, I know that now. But Tosaka, I'm not sure what your point is. I'm sure you're not here to just make fun of my inevitable doom, are you? What kind of sadist do you take me for? After everything I said, you still can't take a hint? I'm asking if you want to team up. Huh? Huh? Uh, uh, what? If I take those words at face value, that means... You want to team up with me, Tosaka? You realize I'm trash, right? You realize I'm a brick and an air ball put together, right? Yeah. 
My arch is still recovering from a serious wound. That's gonna take some time, but in the meantime, I'm not completely out of the fight. And while your servant is superb, her master's dragging her down, making her half as effective. See? Put the two of us together and you've got a hole. Hey, I I'm not that bad of a mage. Don't fucking lie, Shiro. Don't you dare tell that dumbass lie. I count three times in which you almost died. You're the first person I know who's had that happen in a single day. But, fuck you. I'll make it worth your while. I'll let you off for getting Archer hurt and teach you what you need to know to be a master. Oh, and if we have time, I can even give you some pointers on your magecraft. Deal? Uh, it is an attractive proposition from an attractive lady. I know next to nothing, and so Sokka does seem knowledgeable. And I'd like to avoid fighting her if I can. Emiya, I'm waiting for your fucking answer. Come on, chop chop, little nigga. She urges me to make a choice. I... Let's team up! Besides, I don't have... Like, well, like what did you expect? We're, of course we're gonna team up. What? We're not gonna survive without teaming up. Besides, I don't have much of a choice. There's too much I don't know, and I have no experience as a mage. If Osaka is offering to help me, however temporary, it's an offer I can't turn down. Alright, I'll take your offer, Tosaka. Honestly, I really appreciate your help. Then that settles it. Let's shake on it. We're allies until we defeat Berserker. Alright. Yeah, I guess that should be the arrangement. I guess I have control over the timing, but it'll probably help to know the timeline. I shake the offered hand. I'm a little perplexed. Tosaka's hand is so soft, it reminds me that she's a girl. My hand, in comparison, is covered with scratches and it seems a poor match for hers. The moment I think that I find myself getting embarrassed, I quickly pull my hand back. What's wrong? Are you changing your mind about working with me? No, no, it's not that. I really appreciate that I'm going to be able to work with you. That was more uh, a, a personal thing, so don't worry about it. So Sokka looks at me strangely. Oh, her face turns mischievous. Hey. What the- Hey, hey. I might dissolve our agreement if you say some dumb shit. I'm serious, I'll do it. Was that the first time you held a girl's hand? I thought you had a lot of friends. I didn't realize you were so shy, shy, Shiro. Fuck! I thought you had a lot of friends. I didn't realize you were so shy, Shiro. Hey, Ron, that ain't true. She called me by my first name. Who the, who the f There's no way in hell I could say I got embarrassed because it was her. And, and yeah, fine. I haven't really touched a girl so in intimately before, but... And no, Fujine does not count. She's more like something from a different planet than a different gender. Hey, hold on. What did Tosaka just say? <laughs> you really do wear your feelings on your sleeve. Fine, I'll let it go. I wouldn't want you sulking if I push your buttons too much. Then here's my deposit. Consider it pr a proof of my alliance with you. I don't know where she's been keeping it, but she tugs on a giant book and slaps it on the table like it's... Don't say that. It looks like a diary. There's no title and the cover is red wine red. It seems to be Tosaka's trademark color. This was my father's, but I don't need it anymore, so I'll give it to you. It's not the kind of thing a full-fledged master needs, but I figure you might benefit from it, since you fucking suck. Tosaka gestures for me to flip through it. Okay, thanks. I open to a random page, and then... There's nothing written on the pages, but a strange image suddenly pops into my head. Status. Huh? Uh, we don't know her true name. She's lawful good. Strong as hell, whatever that is. 
pretty agile, good magic, good luck, a pretty cool noble phantasm. We don't know shit about her. Magical resistance, writing, intuition, mana burst. Okay. Barrier of Wind King. Oh, let's see Lansing. Kuchulane. Yoma. A great hero of Ireland. Magic resistance, C. I think it's. Archer. Oh, yeah, we don't know his noble phantasm yet. My goodness, he is very decent. Oh my. He is a very decent fighter. <laughs> Extremely mid. We don't know Ryder. We don't know Caster. We don't know Assassin. We got Berserker. Oh my goodness, he's OP! Bro, it's Hercules. Look at weapons. Unnamed Axe Sword. Oh, that's Berserker Sword. Huh? So, Sokka, what is this? It's a chart that record. It's a chart that records each servant's abilities. You know there are certain rules in a Holy Grail War, right? That applies to servants too. First of all, only seven heroic spirits get summoned. The seven can only be summoned after they've been assigned to one of the pre predetermined classes the Holy Grail has prepared in advance. Instead of summoning the heroic spirits themselves, the Holy Grail creates a vessel close to each heroic spirit and then summons the spirit into it. You know how seances and mediums work by calling on the spirit and drawing them into the caster's body so the spirit can communicate, right? It's like that. In order to summon spirits from different ages, you need a sort of container. Classes. Oh, so that's why Saber's called Saber. Exactly. Remember that heroic spirits need to conceal their identities. That's why you never say their real name. So their summon class that then serves as their name. The classes are Saber, Lancer, Archer. Hold on, she got it. A total of seven. The class lineup may differ depending on the Holy Grail War, but we have a classic lineup in this war. The common belief is that Saber is the most powerful. Each class has its own unique characteristics, but each servant's abilities differ according to the summon heroic spirit's rank, so be mindful of that. A heroic spirit's rank? You mean how strong they were in life? That's part of it. Their abilities are also dependent on their notability. What they did or what kind of weapon they wielded may not change, but their basic abilities were changed depending on how famous they were in their time. Heroic spirits are like gods, so they become more powerful the more people worship them. I guess you could say their essence becomes more potent. It's similar to divine spirits falling in rank to elements if they lose devout followers. Similarly, a hero forgotten by the people doesn't have much power. Although, a hero who was powerful to begin with should retain at least some of power and abilities, whether they were unknown or forgotten. Then if the hero was well known and their legend was extraordinary, they would be a rank A servant, yeah. And that's why Berserker might be one of the strongest ever. He's the most famous hero from Greek mythology. Heroes from the Age of Gods already have special noble phantasms to begin with. And there's not much we can do if the heroes themselves are strong. Tosaka, what the fuck is a noble phantasm? A noble phantasm is a servant's iconic item, which they use during their lifetime. Heroes and magical swords or sacred swords come as a set, right? It's basically their armament. Huh? Weapon, like Saber's Invisible Sword? Something like that. I don't know what the story with that sword is, but whatever Saber's wielding is definitely your noble phantasm. I don't think I need to say this, but heroes can't remain in their legend with just their name alone. Each hero has a weapon that is sort of their trademark. And that is the crystallization. 
That is a crystallization of the people's desire for a miracle. The noble phantasm. So it's a powerful magical item. Exactly. Simply put, heroic spirits are no match for powerful magecraft or mystics. But when their noble phantasms come into play, it's a whole different story. Heroic spirits who wield noble phantasms can defeat even elementals, several ranks higher than them. This is because most are sacred or magical swords. That's because most are sacred or magical swords that appear in legend. They are close to that level of magic. Swords that can kill dragons, the most powerful species of phantasmals. Shoes that allow the wearer to travel thousands of miles. Or even magical swords that can kill deities. Whatever they may be, now you understand that the armaments heroic spirits wield are on an entirely different level. So much so that you might wonder why they aren't invincible. It's no exaggeration to say that battles between servants are ultimately battles between the noble phantasms. So what you're saying is that these servants, who are heroic spirits, will most definitely have at least one noble phantasm. Yes. And as a general rule, one heroic spirit can only wield one noble phantasm. They're usually swords or spears. Have you ever heard of the legendary Chinese sword, the Hazanken? The mountain cutting sword? You can only swing it once, but it's a magecraft item said to destroy an entire mountain in one swing. I think it's like that. But noble phantasms are kind of a of kind of miracle activated only when their true names are spoken. So they can't use it casually. It activates when the weapon's name is spoken, right? Why would that make it so hard to use? Don't you realize that saying the weapon's name also tells you which servant the which hero the servant is? The heroes and their magical swords are a set. So if you know their weapon's name, you will also know the wielder's name. If that happens, you'll know their strengths and weaknesses. I see. Yeah, you make a good point. Now that I think back, when Lancer uses Noble Phantasm, Saber immediately figured out his identity. Something about Ireland's Child of Light. Okay, so... Servants are separated by classes, and each of them are heroic spirits suited to that class. They're all concealing their identities, and the weapons that they wield are the most powerful aces they've got up their sleeve, but they can't use it freely, or they would wind up revealing their identity. That's all I can tell you about servants. If you want more details, just look in that book. Flip through it when you have the time. Once you get used to it, you should be able to identify servants intuitively without the book. With that, Tosaka stands up. Okay, well, I'm heading home. Uh, yeah, thanks. I'm still sitting on the floor, so I look up at Tosaka as she gets ready to leave. Don't get confused about things just because we formed an alliance. You and me, we're going to fight eventually. When all the other masses have been defeated, or even if they're still alive, we're bound to fight no matter what. You're better off not seeing me as human, Enmia. After making very clear where we stand, so Sokka leaves for her home. I don't want to fuck. Yada yada yada. I don't want to rock. I can already feel myself getting less and less stressed once Osaka leaves. My feverish body is suddenly overcome with exhaustion and I collapse to the floor. I lie on my side to try to ignore the nausea creeping back over me. The ticking of the clock echoes through the quiet living room. Battle between masters, huh? I still don't understand what the heck that is. All I know is that I don't know much. May have felt more real to me if I was even a little more interested in the Holy Grail. I don't know what it is, but the only thing I can feel for the Holy Grail is disgust. A grail that supposedly grants wishes. I don't know what it is exactly, but it's an artef artifact powerful enough to summon servants. It may not grant every wish, but it's more than valuable enough for a mage. And yet I have no interest. I might be skeptical because it doesn't feel real to me. But I also feel like it's not fair to take a shortcut like that. Plus, it doesn't sit well with me, knowing that the selection process is just battle. 
Yeah, this is a game of musical chairs. No matter how I feel about it, I'll need to overcome my competition and survive now that I'm involved. And one of the methods to get rid of competition could be to involve and harm other innocent people. That's why. Rejoice, Shiro Emiya. My reason to fight the Holy Grail is not to survive and win. Your wish will finally be granted. It's to do everything I can to stop those who will try to win by any means necessary. Where is Saber? I feel dizzy again. That's not surprising. No matter how much my body appears to appears healed, it was nearly split in half just a few hours ago. The feeling isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if I felt this way the rest of my life. I was barely nearly killed three times in one day. There's no denying that someone with no power will wind up hurt if they participate in battle. My own ineptitude nearly cost me my own body. And that girl got hurt trying to protect me. I try to sit back up. Right, her! I can't believe myself. I completely forgot about her because Tosaka had settled herself in my living room. Maybe it's more that I was just avoiding thinking about her. I'm such a coward. I was avoiding thinking about the girl who was bleeding miserably. Even though I was the reason she got hurt in the first place. I can't believe Tosaka left at the most crucial point. I shoved myself back up to my feet. Tosaka never said anything about Saber. The only thing she said was that she and Saber brought me home, but she didn't elaborate. The very first thing I should have asked was whether the girl was safe since Berserker wounded her. I suppress my nausea as I make my way through the mansion. Saber's nowhere to be found. I even checked the detached guest rooms, but I can't find her. That's weird. That armor isn't exactly camouflage. Even so, a fully armored, a fully armed and armored Saber still eludes me. Supposedly, Saber service can turn into spirit forms, but unfortunately, she can't with me. No, first of all, even though I'm called a master, I don't know anything about her. I don't even know what Saber is or how servants are able to exist. It's like a new soldier suddenly gets awarded with a tank. What's fortunate is that this tank has an autopilot. Even if the soldier is in combat, the tank will run on its own. I bang my head against the pillar, frustrated by my own thoughts. What's with these negative thoughts, you idiot? You're whining. I apologize to the blonde girl internally. Right now, I need to find her and see if she's okay. She's not here either. I've looked around the entire house. It's the size of a traditional Japanese inn, but I played hide and seek with Fujine when I was a kid, so I know the most efficient way to search it. She must be in the dojo or the shed if she's not in the house itself. The yard, the shed, or... She told me she was going to protect me. So she's not likely to leave the house. Hey, maybe she's... I suddenly remember another place. She's not in the house, the yard, or the shed where we first met. It's another big building within the compound. That's where she'll be. I head over as quick as I can. My destination to the, is the Kendo Dojo in the detached building. I'm getting a little nervous. If she's not there, I have to accept that she's just disappeared. I realize something. I have no clue who she is, but I still want her to be here. I enter an enclosed room, completely absent of, completely absent any or, ornamentation. It's not a room to live in, and it's a dojo designed only for training. Within a tranquil room, lit by the sun. She sits as if she's always belonged there. The place is hushed, serene. The sunlight coming in is white and untainted, allowing the girl to be one with the dojo. It's the same girl who wielded her sword without hesitation, protecting me from Lancer last night under the moonlight. That golden mane of hers, which has soaked in the blue-white moonlight, now glitters in the sunlight. And then I remember. This is exactly how I felt when I first saw her. She was clad in armor, wielding her sword and suddenly overwhelming the enemy. The extraordinary side of her is what surprised me. In fact, it didn't matter how she looked. 
Even if she'd been covered in mud, I don't think my reaction would have been different. The girl who had so moved me is still right here in front of me. I just admire her, forgetting even to breathe. The hell with being a master in the Holy Grail War. In this moment, I have completely accepted the girl called Saber. I don't know how much time elapsed. Saber opens her eyes as if waking from a slumber. Oh, shit. I sound disappointed and my voice echoes through the dojo in silence. Saber notices and stands up without making a sound. She walks toward me before I can think of what to say. You are awake, Shiro. Her voice is serene. Something rich and calm about her voice hangs in the air. Yeah, I just woke up. I managed to answer at least. Shiro, is something the matter? Perhaps you're still not fully recovered? Uh, n no, I'm fine. I feel real good. Yeah. I recoil from her. I avert my eyes and try to get my heart beating under control before my chest bursts. Get a hold of herself. Why are you getting so worked up like this? I take a deep breath, deep breath. But I don't think this feeling is going away anytime soon. Man, why does she have to change? Saber's appearance is drastically different from yesterday. Her outfit is so ordinary in stark contrast to her armor. Her appearance takes me by surprise. She seems more real which confuses the hell out of me. Seriously, she's drop dead gorgeous. I mean, I saw that yesterday, but it's actually setting in now. Shiro. Nah, actually, I'm gonna end the episode right now. Shiro. Shiro. As soon as we make eye contact, I can feel my nervousness grow. Then again, I wasn't looking I wasn't looking everywhere for her to just stay silent. It's uncomfortable, but I can't let it be awkward forever. Saber, right? This is actually the first time we've sat down to talk. I bite the bullet, but then... Shiro. Before that, there is something I would like to address regarding last night. She interrupts me, obviously displeased, making her earlier calm hard to fathom. Uh, sure, what is it? As I said last night, you are my master. It's troubling if you take such stupid fucking actions. Like, are you actually an idiot? What the fuck is wrong with you? Combat is my territory. So stay the fuck behind me and out of direct line of fire before you get fucked up. I can't protect you when you go out on your own, dumb shit. Apparently determined to die in vain as you so nearly did, dumbass. Savory doesn't mince words. <laughs> I feel like a few of those words weren't even in the dialogue. She just said them. Her clip tone is enough to make me forget my anxiety. <laughs> what the fuck? If I hadn't intervened, you'd have been cut in half. Perhaps I would have died, but you would not have been hurt. Let me repeat myself. Don't do that dumb shit again. My master need not defend me. Nor is there any reason to do so. The girl speaks frankly. She's very clerical. Hey, don't be stupid, bruh. I don't need a reason to protect the girl. The word should pop out before I can think about it. Saber stiffens as if surprised to see me upset at her. I found myself taking a step back, no triple X, under her severe expression. Now I just feel embarrassed. Like I've said something incredibly tone deaf. <laughs> anyway, look. Thanks for taking me home. I appreciate that. My bag, take my bed feel good as fuck. Got the bandages. You are most welcome. It is a service duty to protect their master. But it is still nice to be acknowledged. You are very courteous, Shira. Oh, what a sweetheart. I don't think I'm particularly polite, actually. Nigga, say thank you and move on. There's something more pressing that I need to bring up. I think I should have asked as soon as I got home yesterday. Is she willing to be my servant? And is she really all right with fighting with me in this war? Let's get back on topic, Saber. Oh, uh, I, I can't call you Saber, right? 
Yes. As a servant who has formed a contract with you, I am your sword. I shall follow your orders, attack your enemies, and protect you. Saber does not hesitate in the slightest to give her answer. Saber does not hesitate in the slightest to give her answer. Her tone leaves no room for doubt. You're my sword, huh? To win the Holy Grail thing? Is that not why you summoned me? No. I wound up summoning you because... I couldn't tell her it was a weird, big coincidence. And actually, I didn't even summon her. Saber just appeared when I was in trouble and saved me. And here we were. I became Saber's master and got looped in this battle of death, this holy grail war. I didn't choose any of this. I'm still just an apprentice mage who just got caught up in a battle be way beyond my abilities. Wait, so what about it? I'm already resolved to fight no matter what. There's no point in me crying over my situation now. I shake my head trying to stop myself from bitching and moaning. No more of that. I've already said I'd fight. I can't just drop everything and run. This will be the last time I whine aloud and think negatively. That's a fucking lie. No matter how I get involved, I decided to fight. Shiro. Shiro. Nah, it's nothing. Ooh. But I need to warn you. Your chances of winning are pretty slim with me. I don't have any knowledge or power like Tosaka. We could very well end up in another situation like last night. Are you still okay with that? Are you saying you have no intention of fighting? I have the will to fight. I'm only asking if you still want to team up with me, knowing how slim the odds are. How I got to this conclusion doesn't matter. All that matters is that I've decided to fight this battle. That's why. I don't think it's right for someone to get hurt on my behalf. Even if I'm weak, having Saber fighting, having her get hurt like that. Damn, she got fucked up. Personally, I can't stand that happening again. You're my master, Shiro. That is an immutable fact. Servers do not have the freedom to choose their masters. She's right. That is the whole reason Saber is my servant. If it's true, I'll need to respect Saber's needs and actions as best I can. Got it. Then you're okay with me being your master? Yes. But I also want you to know that I will not allow my master to be defeated. If you have no chance of victory, I must create one. I will utilize every opportunity available for you to obtain the Holy Grail. Obtain the Holy Grail. So Sokka said servants also have a wish they want granny. Saber's no exception. That's why she hasn't hesitated up to this point. But it's also why... Hold on. No, hold on, guys. No, ma matter of fact, matter of fucking fact. Hold on, cause I'm on your ass. I'm on your ass. Don't think I didn't see that shit. No, you know I saw it. I'm on your ass. What it is, hey, you can take this as a shout out or you can take this as a fucking threat. Take it how you want. One dead shot, nine, 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 nine. Talk about some, you're bald? Shut your ass up. Shut your ass up. I ain't bald. I just got a low cut, nigga. Don't do that shit again. Hold on, Saber. You said any means possible, right? Does that mean you'll stop at nothing to win? Like, you might even attack people to gain power? I can't finish my sentence. Saber looks as if looks at me as if she's looking at an enemy. Shiro, that is not what I mean by any means possible. I can only do things I allow myself to. It is impossible for me to betray my own beliefs. Harming unarmed innocents goes against a knight's oath. Fucking W, Saber! That's why you're the GOAT! I love you! However, I must obey if you order so. In that case, you will have to use one of your command spells in compensation. I get overwhelmed by the edge in her voice. At the same time, I feel relief flooding through me. Saber seemed like a robot because of her extraordinary power and lack of hesitation. But I know now she's not some cold-blooded killer. 
Yeah, I wouldn't make you do anything like that. Just as you say, we have to do our best with what we can do. I'm really sorry. What I've said must have been insulting. No, I also failed to grasp your intentions and jump to conclusions. You are not at fault, so may you please raise your head. He hit her with the... Hold on. He hit her with the, the 90 degrees. Oh, oh shit. I, I bowed without realizing it. I raised my head. Look at that smile! Look at that smile! I don't know what's funny, but... Saber has a small smile on her face. But I'm glad she's happy, so I don't press it. Ah, I forgot to bring this up. In addition to doing everything we can, I've decided to team up with Tosaka for the time being. Remember her? The girl who was with us last night, Archer's master? He's like, I'm gonna fuck you. <laughs> no, no, I'm not gonna fuck you. I'm gonna fuck you up. I, I didn't finish the sentence. <laughs> you mean Rin? That is certainly a wise decision. I'm sure there are many things you can learn from her until you become a full-fledged master. That's a relief. As long as Saber agrees, and I can work together with Tosaka without hesitation. The only other thing I need to ask her right now is... Where'd you get those clothes? Are you okay? I mean, she got almost got fucking chopped in half. I mean, I am curious on where the fuck those clothes came from, but like... We need to prioritize. We need to know if she's okay or not. Because we can't just fucking go out into another fight and it turns out that she's still hurt from yesterday's fight. Are you okay? I'm worried about Saber. She was hurt pretty bad. By the way, Saber, are you alright? It looked like you took a real beating from Berserker. As you can see, my body is back to normal. My wounds were severe enough to ensure defeat, but not to be fatal. I finished recovering roughly an hour after Berserker retreated. Damn! You got a damn Deadpool healing fact. You think you Wolverine, bitch? What? So you're completely back to normal already? Of course. However, I am not entirely in peak condition. I was able to heal my wounds from Berserker's attacks because they were rather mundane as these things go. But my wound from Lancer's Noble Phantasm is another matter. That spear must have been imbued with a special curse. The wounds I sustained have not completely healed. Not completely healed, huh? She doesn't look wounded, but Sabre doesn't seem the type to complain about pain. As long as I'm fighting with Saber, it's sounding like I need to keep a pretty sharp eye on her well-being. But then, I hear something heavy hit the floor by the door. The fuck was that? I turn to face the sound at the door. There's Tosaka, a duffel bag at her feet. What? My mind comes to a screeching halt. I thought Tosaka had gone home, but here she is at the dojo in her ordinary clothes. And why is she carrying so much shit? Yo, 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 yo. I'm going to keep it a bean, bro. I'm going to keep it a Kobe bean. What the fuck are you doing in my crib? What do you mean? I went home to get my stuff. Wouldn't it be sens Wouldn't it be a sensible thing that I'm going... Fuck. Wouldn't it... Wouldn't, fuck. Wouldn't, fuck. Wouldn't it be the sensible thing since I'm going to live here from now on? Why are you going to live here? What? Live. You living here, in my house, what? That's what teaming up means, right? Honestly, what did you think we were talking about earlier? I, I can't even speak, I need something. I need to say something or, or else this is gonna turn into a huge mess. But my brain is not braining. So where's my room? If you don't have one ready, I'll just pick one. He just pushes right by me, brashly invading my home. Hey, hold up, that's... Wouldn't this be wrong? I mean, Tosaka pretty much the school's idol. Having her in my house at all is already a big deal, but I don't know how people were reacting she started staying here or living with me. And Fujinae would fucking murder me. And, well, may maybe this is just a... Maybe this is just a plot on Tosaka's part to get rid of a master? Oh, by the way, why don't you prepare a room for her too? Unlike my archer, your servant actually takes up space. 
So you need to set up a place for her to rest. Well, I guess it's not a huge deal if you think just one futon will be enough for the two of you. What? Is she implying Saber and I sleep in the same bed or something? That would be fucking awesome. Like hell that's gonna happen, idiot! You think you can just say whatever you want because I'm being quiet, but that ain't never happening. Saber's a girl, you know? Come on now. You're missing a point, but whatever. Did you hear that, Saber? Shiro's saying he doesn't want to share a room with a girl. <laughs> she finna beat my ass! <laughs> Why she look like she finna whoop my ass, bro? Saber's staring at me. She looks really stern. She's about to choke me to death. That will not do, Shiro. A servant must protect their master at all times. Masters are most vulnerable when they are asleep, so I must be in the room with you to protect you. Tosaka, get that dumbass smile off your face. <laughs> That's even worse. What the hell are you two thinking? Should girls really be talking about this kind of stuff? Why? Why are the two of them just silently staring at me like that? Uh-huh. You do know you don't really need to treat service like humans, right? I guess there's just no sense telling Shiro that, though. I'm about to protest, but I shut my mouth. I don't feel like hearing them talk shit. The discomfort I felt when I was talking to Tosaka in the living room earlier comes rushing back. Actually, I've just figured out the cause of my discomfort. Hold on, Tosaka. When did you start calling me by my first name? Huh? I didn't even realize it. I thought it happened pretty quickly. It did happen quickly. This is how I felt. Oh, if you don't like it, I'll try to be more careful about it. But do you care, Shiro? Sasaka's so casual about this. Not really caring how I feel. You were right, he say. It's not that Rento Sokka might be a cruel entrances. She is one! Fine, do, do what the fuck you want. You can call me whatever you like. Alright then, I'll call you bitch nigga. <laughs> yeah, I will then. <laughs> Rin, please do not change the subject. We have not finished deciding the matter Shiro and- We have not just finished deciding the matter Shiro and my living arrangements. Oh, that's right. But given Shiro's reaction, it might not be realistic for you and Shiro to share a room. There's no point treating servants like humans, but you might as well give us and Shiro hates that idea. That is not true. Shiro simply expresses discomfort, but he did not outright say no. You heard her. So what do you really mean, Shiro? Hold on a minute. I don't understand how in a single day she could just casually start calling me Shiro. Like a cat, she just picked up a name. Well, it's not really the issue here. This is about Saber's living arrangement. Shiro, I will ask you once again. It is a servant's job to guard you while you sleep. At this point, I'm sure you understand your position as a master. Uh, my decision won't change no matter how much she stares at me like that. Shiro, stop being fucking stupid, okay? Stop being stupid. What you gonna do if Lancer pull up in your crib and in your room jump through your damn, uh, your, your damn window while Saber's in another room sleeping, huh? And you sleeping. He gonna put that spear through your dick and you gonna die. You better let Saber stay in the room. Don't be fucking stupid, bro. No, I'll prepare a different room for Saber. I'll make sure her room's closest to mine. That should be a good compromise. You're fucking stupid. Intimidation won't work with me. Anyway, I'm a man, so I have to draw the line. You need to be more mindful of your position too, Saber. Shit will get freaky if you come over here. They call me Kevin Gates in the streets. Yes, exactly. That is why I'm simply insisting as a servant that I protect Master. No, not that. Talking about your own position. Ah, you don't fucking get it. Never mind. Never mind. If you're gonna keep pressing the issue, I'll make you understand. I'll make you understand if I gotta use a command spell. I try to scare Saber off the subject. Shiro. Shiro. <laughs> You're fucking stupid. I would not like you using a command spell for that reason. Our future would be bleak indeed if you were to use such a thing to command me not to protect you. 
You're right. Shiro is the first and definitely last master to say some dumb shit like that. Don't be stupid. I wouldn't use my command spell for something like that either. Not like, like this either. Understood. I'll follow master's command. But what will you do if you are ambushed? Assassins have the ability to close in on their target by concealing their presence. If that were to happen, are you able to protect yourself until I reach you? Well, I... I, I can't really tell her I can take care of myself. That'd be a damn lie. Yeah, I managed to survive against Lancer, but I won't have that type of luck twice. That's not possible. This mansion has a bounded field set up to alert the residents of any intruders. We may not be able to avoid being attacked, but we should be able to detect attempts at an ambush. If that happens, Saber should have enough time to rush to Shiro's defensive before he's attacked. So she can go ahead and take another room. That may be true, but... Then why don't you take the room next to Shiro's? You're fine as long as you two don't share a room, right, Emiya? So Sokka purposely calls me Emiya at the end. So Sokka, that's a bit of a misconception. I'm saying it for your sake so it's justified. Anyway, I wonder which room I should take. So Sokka takes her luggage and heads toward the mansion, putting an end to the conversation. She seems cheerful, like a student picking her room at our school trip. How terrifying. The way Tosaka carries herself so self-assuredly mesmerizes the two of us, and we both watch her go in stunned dismay. We all lead a dojo and head back to the house. For the time being, I need to give them all a tour so Saber can select her room. Ooh, this is the Japanese style room. If you head towards the back, you'll find the living room, bathroom, and other communal spaces. You'll get to the guest room if you walk along the veranda corridor towards the detached side of the house. Seems like Tosaka wants to go that way. As we walk, I explain where everything is. I'm not sure if she's even listening since Saber's just following me without reacting to a single thing I say. I do not need to know the layout of your house. I just need to know where your room is, Shiro. My room is this way. It's pretty far into the house. Then please, lead me there. There is something I wish to discuss with you privately. Privately? That means it's something she doesn't want Tosaka to hear. Hold on, I'll be breaking back. I don't think Tosaka would hear us since she's in the detached area of the house, but I can't forget that she's still a master. She could just as easily listen in, and besides, the veranda's hardly a place to talk in private. She wants, hey, she wants backs broken. She wants backs broken. Hold on. Hold on, wait! She wants backs broken. I'm finna go and open. Open that door. Your mom's a whore. I'm finna go play a sport like baseball or football. I'm finna go and pull up, kick a nigga ball. What the fuck am I on about? Oh, <laughs> here, this is my room. What? This is your room, Shiro? Huh? The moment we step into my room, Saber's eyes widen with surprise. What's wrong? I don't think there's anything around here that should surprise you like that. No, it's it is not that there's anything that surprises me. It is more that I'm surprised that there's nothing here. Are you certain this is your room? Why would I lie to you about that? I only come here to sleep, so it makes sense there's nothing here. I see. I just did not surprise. I just did not expect that. I imagine you to be a collector of some sort. I need water. Saber stepped into the Japanese style room, running her hand along the wall and sliding paper door, feeling its texture. Her touch is gentle, as if contact with these things will let her learn their history, see their memories. I am glad. Your room may be seem sparse, but it feel I'm glad. Your room may seem sparse, but it feels like it's been treated with care. It looks drab, but I can feel the warmth here. Are you dissing my fucking room? Warm. Well, I guess that's true. Maybe it's how the mansion's been structured. But this room is cool during the summer, warm and winter. My old man was also impressed and said I chose well. Yes, yeah, so the room is a reflection of the owner's personality. The state of this room left me concerned about your disposition. But now my impression of you is as it was previous to coming here. Saber sounds relieved, but I don't know what the hell she's talking about. So, what you want to talk to me privately about? 
two things, both of which I would like to keep between the two of us. Is that all right? Well, if you say so, I don't mind. But at least tell me what they are, or else I won't know whether it's good or bad. Both are bad. <laughs> Both are bad. At the very least, I do not want any of the other masters knowing this. From Saber's expression, I'm guessing she has... This has something to do with our shortcomings. Okay, I think I got the gist of what's on your mind. Go ahead and tell me what it is. The first thing is about the summon servant's first obligation. I am afraid I cannot fulfill that obligation, so I would like to apologize in advance. A servant's first obligation? Revealing my identity to you. Have you not heard it from Rin? About who you are? Oh, you mean your real name! Servants are heroic spirits. They, they are heroes who have made a name for themselves throughout history and around the world. They conceal their identities as well as their skills by using class names. A servant's true name isn't something to reveal lightly, but their masters should know. Without knowing their identity, masters won't know a servant's strengths and abilities. Master and servant are one. The pair simply can't battle effectively if one has something to hide. At least that's what be, that would be the case if we were talking about a normal master. I fucking suck. Knowing Saber's true name won't change the fact that I still can't use it to her full potential. And I wasn't all that interested in the first place. Okay, that's fine, but why? I am basing this on my own understanding of the situation. In spite of whatever intentions or efforts on my part to protect my true name, there are numerous raids which which an enemy could use magecraft to rip that knowledge from you. You have little resistance to magecraft. A skilled mage could easily take advantage of this should you fall under an enemy's spell. You may reveal my true name entirely against your will. Oh, I get it. Yeah, you're right. I'd give it up the moment a spell was cast on me. Let's keep it a secret. I appreciate your understanding. Then again, I am not as renowned or distinguished as the likes of Berserker anyway. It may not make much of a difference even if my name were to be revealed. Saber's tone is regretful. I hadn't quite expected that. She seems to have a human side to her, which which she shows, which she lets show in revealing how frustrated she she made. Fuck! I hadn't quite. Ex Saber's tone is regretful. I haven't quite expected that. She seems to have a human side to her, which she lets show in revealing how she's frustrated she may be inferior to Berserker as a hero. Man, that doesn't matter. An ace up your sleeves only value isn't when it's concealed. I can tell you're trying to be creative since you ended up with such a terrible master. Besides, don't you think Berserker's kind of unfair anyway? <laughs> There's no reason for you to get depressed about it. And from my point of view, you weren't completely inferior to that thing. You were injured pretty bad, but you were holding your own. You may be right. I was caught off guard last night, but once my wounds are fully healed, things will go differently. I bet. Alright, that's the first topic. Chop chop, little nigga. What's the other thing you wanted to talk about? Yes, about that. I am afraid that this is something we are unable to resolve on our own. Servers maintain their form with the magical energy their masters supply. That is why a server requires a master. But because I'm a shitty master, I don't have enough magical energy to maintain your body. That is not what I am saying. Even if I were to re receive a small amount of magical energy from my master, that would not be a problem. However, as of now, I'm not receiving any magical energy from you at all. The ley line connection we should have is not present. That means... That means while I'm supposed to be providing Saber with fuel for her engine, so to speak, I'm not. S Saber, that means... This is not a shortcoming on your part. Something must have happened at the time of my summoning. Some sort of error must have occurred, and the connection that should have been formed between us failed to do so properly. An error during your summoning. When Saber was caught here, it wasn't any sort of summoning. It was an accident. There's no wonder Saber's having these issues since she was summoned that way. Wait, then what's gonna happen? If you can't replenish magical energy, does that mean you're gonna disappear soon? Yes, once I use up all the magical energy I possess, I will no longer be able to remain in this world. I have already fought three battles since I was summoned. My healing ability is a type of regeneration magecraft, so I will consume more magical energy whenever I'm injured. 
By my calculations, I must have used about 10 full-fledged mages worth of magical energy last night. What? I'm speechless. Every time Saber fights, she loses magical energy, and there's no way for her to replace it. If she's used that much magical energy already, how much longer can Saber stay here? Now you understand, Master. Thus, I must avoid using any more magical energy. If I am unable to su supplement my magical energy, then the only other method is for me to sleep to reduce the consumption of magical energy. Sleep. Does sleeping restore magical energy? I do not know, but at the very least, I will not use any magical energy while asleep. Which is why I would like you to permit me to sleep as much as possible. I may not be able to protect you all the time, but I hope you do understand so that we may increase our chances of victory. I sign relief. Thank goodness, I'll give her whatever she wants if that's all there is to it. Of course that's okay. First all you want if things get rough for you. I'd rather you do that if it'll allow you to stay with me a little longer. And from now on I will sleep often. During that time I ask that you do not leave the mansion. I will not be able to come to your aid if you are attacked while we, are, while we are apart. Matters would be different if I could travel through space and time, but that is a rare ability for servants to have. If you were to call me from a distance, you will need to use command spells as backup, so I would prefer you remain, remain nearby. Much as I would like to, I can't readily agree. I can't have your favorite sticking by my side at all times, and I do, not have my own, I do have my own life to live, too. I'll try, but is that all you need me to do? If you're asleep, you'll... It should not be a problem. I cannot be certain since it has never happened before. But I went into battle I went into, I went into battle fewer than seven times last time. Even if I do not go out and fight, some of the other servants will dispatch each other. I see. So it doesn't mean everyone has to battle everyone else. If it all goes well, we can win this war pretty easily. The only people I need to fight are those who start doing things no person should. Can't imagine all seven, all seven would be like that. Even Tosaka, who seemed eager to fight, would still abide by the rules of mages. And as long as the other five masters act humanely, I have no intention of fighting them. Saber even said, her, said, Saber even said she didn't fight seven masters last time, so this time around... Oh shit, hold on a minute. Last time... You were than seven fights? Hold on, Saber. Are you telling me you were the Saber last time too? I mean, does that mean you participated in the last Holy Grail War too? This is the second time I've been participated. I've participated in this war for the Holy Grail. I was a Saber last time I w as well. There are heroic spirits who possess attributes suited to multiple classes, but I only fall under the Saber class. I remember something Tosaka said. She said that out of seven servant classes, Saber is the best one. And this girl said that she's been summoned to, in the, as that class twice in a row. Does that mean last time you stayed until the end? Of course. I did not have any constraint. I didn't have any of the constraints I do last now last time. Of course, I did not have any of the constraints I do now last time, so I never fell behind the other servants. Saber says it's as if it should be obvious. Her statement forces me to realize something. The sword of my possession now is not something I'm worthy of. I don't deserve her. Damn. And you must really be unsatisfied with someone like me as your master. I simply fulfill the duties that I have been given to me. I simply fulfill the duties that have been given to me. As long as I can obtain the Holy Grail, I have no complaints about who my master is. Got it. That's a relief, but... She used to be she used to be fully prepared and in capable hands, but now she's been injured twice already. All because she can't replenish her magical energy. That means she'll constantly have to consider how much magical energy she has left as she fights. And because she needs to fight with all these restrictions in her last battle, she wound up covered in her own blood. The image still haunts my mind. I can I still see that girl smaller and slighter than me being so brutally injured. Shiro, there's no reason to regret such a thing. 
Tapered's voice snaps him back to reality. It is not as it is not that I have never known defeat. I was not victorious last time, and so now I am your servant. I am accustomed to injury, so there is so there is no so there is no call for you to be distressed over my wounds. Used to it. Even if your injury looked like they could be fatal? Yes. To wield a sword is to be prepared to accept the consequences of doing so. This holds true for you as well. It is unreasonable to expect me to come out of this unscathed. Well, yeah, but... So you're saying you don't mind getting hurt? As long as the injuries are not fatal, if I die, I will not be able to protect my master. The hell? So you don't care if you get injured as long as you protect your master? That is a servant's role. In this, Rain is absolutely correct. There is no cause to treat servants like humans. We are tools used to protect our master, and that is something you must understand. Having said her piece, Sabra walks towards the sliding door. There's a room opposite of the screen door. My room has always been big enough for me, so I never use the adjacent room. I will go to sleep now. I will wake up at dinner time, so please let me know if you are going to step out. The sliding door opens quietly, then slides back shut. We are tools used to protect our master. That is something you must understand. What kind of logic is that? Pisses me off. I can't say that aloud, so I just take in Saber's words and stand alone, perplexed. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, I just went back right quick, and I saw, um, and I wanted to... Cause I noticed when I looked at the flow chart and I noticed that I didn't, I didn't select the right thing for the heart. So I just went back and I, I, I want to just see like what it would, what, what the, I wanted to, I just went to see like what the right thing to select would have been. That was all. I just wanted to see what the right thing to select would have been. It was a funny dress. I'm not going to go back though. I already read this shit. Or rather, honestly. Fuck it, y'all get to see both, actually. I'm gonna just go in and... Why not, actually? Y'all got to see me worried about her. Y'all gonna see me doing... Y'all gonna see the funny dress, too. <laughs> Why not? I can cheat this one time. Come on, I can cheat this one time. <laughs> we have a flow chart for a reason. Where'd you get those clothes? I should ask her about those clothes she's wearing. So, Saber, I want to ask you something. Yes, what is it? Where did you get those clothes? You look completely different than yesterday, so you kind of caught me off guard. Actually, I'm still bewildered. Rin provided them for me. She thought it would be best if I avoid attracting attentions, as I am unable to return to spirit form. I see. I had no idea. What about them? Nothing. Don't worry about it. You're just bad as fuck. I want to tell her they look good on her, but I managed to stop myself. If I said something like that, I'd probably go beat Red. Shiro. Uh, I, well, yeah, you know, uh, yesterday's armor, yeah. Yeah, I, I was just wondering what happened to your armor. There is no need to worry about that. There are no rules for wearing armor, so I have it off while I am wearing these clothes. That armor is created for my magical energy. I can call for it as needed. I can only respond with amazement. That's actually kind of fucking awesome. Anyway, there's no doubt she'd draw a lot of attention going around in that armor. But with Saber, she's wearing something like that. I could probably make up some story to the neighbor that she's a distant relative of my old man or something. Well, well actually, I have to do that anyway. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, 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 alright. So that's that. Now we're right back where we left off. I just wanted to see that right quick. I sit at the edge of the veranda and mindlessly look up at the blue sky. I may not sleep during the day like Saber, but I still need rest. I'm not nauseous any I'm not nauseous anymore, but I still feel terrible. On top of that, all the unexpected things that have happened are weighing heavily on me. Ooh. I take a deep breath and look blankly out over the yard. I asked about everything I needed to know, and I got the, and I got answers, but I'm no less lost for it. Yet Tosaka, my senior mage, or rather, 
a full-fledged mage is completely nonchalant about the whole situation. Hey, do you have any extra cushions around? Also, Beaker's in a protractor? She's busy scouring the house for stuff. Take any cushion you want from the guest room. But a normal house doesn't have beakers or protractors. Are you serious? A maid should always keep experimental tools around. Complaining loudly, she turns and heads back to the detached building. Sokka's really serious about getting herself situated here. And, f and the matter of her staring overnight seems to also be settled. When I peeked into the detached building earlier, she'd already picked out the best room for herself. She'd even put up a sign that read, Remodeling in progress, do not enter. Oh, okay, man. Fine, I guess it won't be an issue since the detached building is far away enough. Having Saber around already has me on edge, but if Tosaka were close too, there'd be nowhere for me to relax anymore. The detached building is far enough, and even though it's connected by a corridor, it feels like a neighboring house. As long as I keep my distance, nothing bad should happen. Oh, but I guess we'll see each other during meals. And there's only one bath here. So I'll have to decide when each of us will use it. Oh, wait a minute, Saber's a girl too, so... <laughs> Idiot, what the hell am I thinking? I shake my head violently and slump back onto the floor. Come on, man, get your mind out of the gutter. With that must be my million side to... With, with what my... Fuck! With what must be my million side today, I stare blankly up at the sky. I'm getting drowsy. Must be more tired than I realized. Ugh, whatever. I just go ahead and close my eyes. Apparently, not caring at all works wonders. The moment I close my eyes, I drift right off to sleep. Next thing I know, the sun has long since set, and Saber, Tosaka, and I have gathered around in the living room. I've only just woken up, and Saber's already in the living room. Tosaka just finished remodeling her room. By the way, this is what the guest room looked like a few hours ago. But now, Shiro, how do I use the AC in here? This was what I saw after being summoned for something so trivial. Even Fujine wouldn't have bothered me with it. The room had transformed into this. I sure know how to pick a teammate. Gotta check my recording. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> my house is playing host to not one, but two invaders. And I'm all the more settled because I so rarely have guests here. Actually. These two don't even look like they belong in a Japanese-style house to begin with. The time is almost 7 o'clock at night. Everyone's in the living room, but staying quiet and doing nothing isn't really good for my mental well-being. If you two don't mind, I want to talk about what we do from here. Just a sec. Before we do that, I want to set one thing straight. Uh, sure. What's that? It's about dinner. Shiro, you've been living alone for a while, right? Huh? Well, yeah. Which means you've been making your own meals, right? Of course, I'd go hungry if I didn't eat. I see, then I have a proposal for you. Why don't we take turns preparing dinner? We're gonna be living together for a while, so that'll help, right? You're right. I was thinking of going about my normal routine, but now that you're going to be living here, you'll you'll be like family. You'll be expected to cook and lift some, some of the burden from me. That settled thing. Today it'll be Shiro's turn. Fuck you! It's late already, so let's talk about this after we've eaten. Wait, it, it's fine if we take turns cooking dinner, but what about breakfast? We're going to take turns for breakfast too? Don't worry about breakfast. I don't eat breakfast. What? Don't be ridiculous. You won't go break. You won't grow big and strong unless you eat breakfast. Mind your own business. Anyway, you're gonna make dinner today. And if you don't make something decent, I'm not talking to you. Where's my dinner, nigga? 
Hold on, she just, she gonna beat the shit out of me if the food cold. Hold on. This is domestic violins, bruh. For the life of me, I don't know what set her off. But Osaka glares at me, irritated. She don't want to grow big and strong. She want to grow small and weak. Fine, I'll make something. Saber, you're going to eat too, right? If you're going to prepare something, then yes. Meals are an important source of energy. Got it. Then you two sit back and behave yourselves. I don't want to hear no arguing, okay? Be good. I want you to be good. I grab my apron and head to the kitchen. Luckily, there are enough ingredients for a meal for three. I turned on the rice cooker right when I, I turned on the rice cooker right when I woke up, so it should be done in about half an hour. I glanced towards Tosaki and Saber from the kitchen. Those two look like they would prefer eating Western style meals over Japanese meals. I seriously doubt Saber would like tofu and natto, to say nothing of Tosaka. Actually, I don't think Saber will be able to hold chopsticks in the first place. I hesitate for a minute, but there's no point worrying about this now. There's only a few dishes I can make with the ingredients I have right now. I have tofu. I think for a moment and decide to make deep fried tofu. I also decide to make a simple tofu and seaweed soup. As I have some chicken prepped, I'll use that to make teriyaki chicken as the main dish. Hey, remember, like, she's like, is like she's European, I'm pretty sure, so be careful with that seasoning. Like you, you put like you put you put some damn lemon pepper on that shit, some soy sauce, she might die. So be careful with that. We don't want to reopen her wounds. I drain the water from the tofu, season the chicken to cut the daikon into thin strips to make a crunchy salad. I also grate the daikon to make a sauce and saute some shishito peppers. When I think of seasoning, I immediately think of lemon pepper. <laughs> Have you decided on what to do, Rain? Not really. I can't say much because I don't have much information, but I think the most important thing to do is to find other masters. There are four more masters. I like to search for them without revealing that I'm a master too, but I don't think that's realistic. I told them to be good, but they're on a pretty disturbing topic. Don't they see I'm busy making dinner for the three of us? They're not even looking over here. Tosaka, not four, it's five. The only masters we know so far are you and me. I shout my contribution from the kitchen, trying to hold a big frying pot to make the deep fried tofu. What are you talking about? We know three. You, me, and Iliasvel. Did you already forget about Berserker? Oh, shit. All right, that little girl is also a master. I completely forgot about her since Berserker left such a vivid impression on me. But now I remember that little girl is a master too. She tried to kill us without a second's hesitation. Fucking asshole. I bet you didn't even consider Ilias Vel as an enemy. Forget about that for now. Let's just concentrate on cooking. We're gonna have a problem if I can't judge how good you are. I don't know that my cooking are gonna I don't know that my cooking skills are gonna be problematic to Tosaka, but she's right. The food prep's pretty much done, so I need to concentrate and finish the dishes now. Iliasville, Berserker's master. You seem to know her, Rin. Well, yeah, or I know the name anyway. The Einsburns are a mage family who have been in the Holy Grail a few times. So they are well versed in the Holy Grail war. Probably. I don't know about the others, but I can say pretty confidently that Iliasville is our biggest obstacle. The Berserker class is typically used to enhance a weak hero. It takes a heroic spirit's sanity in exchange for strengthening them. But the control of master that's turned violent requires a vast amount of magical energy. To say, for example, if you became a Berserker class, I would not be able to communicate with you as I am now. Berserkers are entirely specialized in combat, totally unable to cooperate with anyone. It would be like attempting to tame a wounded lion. No ordinary mage could control such a servant. I figured as much. An ordinary mage would have been would have a difficult time controlling a berserker, even if the heroic spirit was a minor hero. Yet Iliasville summoned an absolutely top-tier hero as a berserker, and she's managed to control him completely. 
I hate to say this, but that girl's master as a that girl's ability as a master is on an entirely different level. I agree. Our current problem is that we are being targeted by this extraordinary master. Right. My archer hasn't recovered to the point where he can return to battle. What about you, Saber? How are your wounds? I should be fine for normal battles, but I have not yet recovered to the point where I can go against Berserker. The wounds I sustained from Berserker are completely healed, but it appears the wounds I received from Lancer will take longer. I see. Then at this point, we have no choice but to wait and see. I have a suggestion. I hear Archer has keen eyes. What do you think of having him watch over this house and the surrounding area? I intend to have him do just that. I'll have him keep watch on the roof. I'll have him keep watch on the roof. So we should know right away if someone suspicious gets near. This house also has a bounded field around it. So we should be as good as... So we should be good as far as defenses go. Though so if a berserker came to invade this house, our only option would be would probably be to run away. The two continued the conversation. I don't like it. I'm the one making dinner for them, so I think it's rude for them to talk without me. Besides, Tosaka is too friendly with Saber. Well, I, I can't really talk to Tosaka so casually like that. So maybe Tosaka is just talking to Saber on my behalf. Huh. I see my face my face reflected in the glass on the kitchen cabinet, my brows furrowed in disapproval. That's weird, why am I so mad? Okay then. I set out three plates and start serving dinner. I head out into the living room. You know, this isn't the best topic for dinner. I loudly smack the tray down in front of Tosaka. Why are you so mad, Shiro? Oh, is it because you wanted me to help serve the food? I'm not mad. I just thought you were trying to act aloof around people. I give her a sideways glance. Osaka <laughs> seems perplexed. And then she gives me a chilling smile. We were just deciding on how our partnership was going to work. Don't worry, I'm not trying to steal your saber. What the f I can tell I'm starting to blush. So Sokka just pointed out why I was annoyed. <laughs> hey, hey, mm. Mm. Oh, am I wrong? Then I apologize, Emiya. You, you say whatever the hell you want. I retreat to the kitchen and grab the rest of the dishes. She really got to me. <laughs> so Sokka's still smiling and Saber's as expressionless as ever. I'm starting to wonder whether I can survive this partnership. Stop being petty, nigga. <laughs> but we go ahead and start dinner. I'm giving her the silent treatment. After what happened earlier, I don't want to talk to Tosaka. And I'm too embarrassed to even look at Saber. Saber eats in silence. Her movements are elegant. I can't believe she's the same girl who was swinging a sword earlier. I can't put a finger on it, but... Hmm... Uh. Every time she takes a bite of something she hasn't eaten before, she nods. It's amusing. <laughs> seems to be her way of saying the food is good. Also, in turn, it seems she can use chopsticks properly. So Sock, on the other hand... The moment she takes her first bite... The moment she takes her first bite, she clenches her fist and says... Alright, I can do better than this. Just you wait and see tomorrow, Shiro Emiya. Osaka's fist trembles with excitement. <laughs> Why? Just enjoy the food, bruh. <laughs> Dear God, have I done something bad? Okay, so about what you two were discussing earlier. The two raised their heads simultaneously. Wait, 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 wait. I'm already nervous with just one of them around, so having the two react in unison like that is torture. What we were discussing earlier? About what to do from now on. You two were talking about it while I was cooking. About looking for the other masters? Yeah, that. I'm just wondering if you have a specific plan. There's nothing to do than other there's nothing to do other than to take it slow and steady. Oh, by the way, can you at least sense other mages? It'd make things a lot easier if you could. 
I can't. I didn't know you were a mage and we've been going to the same school for two years. I knew it. Well, that's fine. I'm sure the others are concealing their presence anyway, so searching for them isn't the best way option anyways. What about you, Saber? I hear servants can detect other servants. I can somewhat. However, that is only if they are using their abilities nearby. In my case, I can only detect other servants in about a 200 meter radius. Radius. I see. And we really do need to just wait and see if someone makes a move. Or to look for some place that seems odd to us. A master would leave some traces or hints behind when they make a move, so we'll have to search for those. Are you saying we need to search all over town? No, we really shouldn't do that. Our opponents are probably our opponents are probably set up some sort of net too. So they'll know right away if we are masters if we do something like that. For now, we should hold off on taking initiative until we figured out a plan. Just live your life the way you always have and don't let them discover that you're a master. Hide the command spell on your hand so they can't see it. Try not to go anywhere where there aren't plenty of people around. Head home as soon as the sun sets. And what else? Please, take your servant with you whenever you go outside. Can Archer act as your escort and guard you in? I think he can do that. It shouldn't be a problem for me because I'll have him be in spirit form on standby. The problem is... My master. Exactly. Hey, are you even listening, Shiro? Take Saber with you everywhere you go. We may have decided not to draw attention, but there could still be some idiot who might attack us in broad daylight. Have Saber with you in case that happens. Alright, I'll try. My response is pretty half-hearted. I understand why Tosaka would say that, but I hesitate at the idea of taking Saber everywhere. I'm already nervous talking to Tosaka, but Saber makes me even more nervous. Actually, nervous might not be the right word. I'm just bad at talking to Saber. What is it? Nothing! Hey, do you want a second helping? Hand me your bow. No, I am fine. It was very good, Shiro. Oh, golly gee. She makes my knees weak, bro. I avert my gaze without meaning to. If I can't even look her in the eye right now, who knows how I'm gonna feel or what I'll do if we're alone, if we're gonna be together all the time. Oh, but this might be hard. Saber can't turn into her spirit form, so she can't follow you to school. School? Are you a student, Shiro? Yeah, I am. Ah, right. Saber can't go to school because she's not a student. I guess I'll just have her stay home while I'm at school. Is it possible for you not to go to school, Shiro? I cannot do that. I should live my life like normal, so I need to go to school. Besides, school is safe. There's not a lot of places with so many people. But... It'll be okay, Saber. I'll be there too, so I can, I'll back him up if something happens. And I keep saying nothing will happen. Are you sure? Are you sure? Like, let's not, let's not forget that it, that the first time you were attacked was at school. Understood. If Master says so, I will oblige. Saber doesn't look convinced, but she still nods in agreement. I love you, Saber. Night falls. So Sokka looks like she prepared herself a bath while I was cleaning up after dinner. Honestly, she acting like she owns the place right from the start. I'll need to make clear who the boss around here, or things are gonna get real tough for me in the future. Easier said than done. I get the sense seizing the initiative is gonna be really hard. You need to go into that bathroom, kick that door open, pull out a switch, and whoop her ass. That's what you gotta do. Let her know who run this shit. You gotta challenge her to a damn Agni Kai on some Avatar shit. Let her know who run this house. Battle her. So like solidify your territory. Piss on the door, nigga. Mark your shit. <laughs> what the fuck? Speaking of difficulties, there's a there's another person who'll be my source of headaches. Actually, Saber's probably my bigger obstacle. So Sokka can be reasoned with, but Saber seems completely impossible to convince no matter what. 
Saber. I know she's not a bad person, but Saber's back in her room. So Sokka's probably back in her own room in the detached area of the house. I'm the only one in the living room. There's still some time before bedtime, so I have to talk to Saber a bit more. Honestly, I need to overcome my awkwardness around her or else I'm going to suffer for it. Whether she's a servant or not, she's still a girl and younger than me. I'm sure I could learn a lot about her if we talked, plus... I don't need to get used to her at Tosaka. I need to get used to her at Tosaka never going to stop looking down on me. And that's a problem. I don't want that, so I should work on talking to her more casually. Okay, so... Y'all see my thumbnails and it says Fate Route? I actually did not know that the routes can change depending on what you do. I thought it was like a set thing. So I will be using the flow chart to go down the fate route. And I, I'm pretty sure from a comment I received before, if I can check it right quick. If I can check it right quick. Yeah, the fate route. The fate route is set is um saber. So I'm a, I'm gonna do whatever like I'm gonna do whatever like to get her points. I don't want that, so I should work on talking to her more casually. I don't know, bro. I think I think I just I could just go on normally and I'll go and I'll be down the I'll go down the fate route anyways, cause it just says fate. Like it looks like I'm already in that route anyways. I go back to my own room. The room next to mine, separated by a single sliding door, is Saber's room. Saber, are you awake? I am. Is something the matter, Master? Saber slides the door open. I try to get the hammering of my heart on the control as she comes near. Calm down, I'm not gonna talk to her as a master. Shiro, you do not look well. Has your wound opened up? No, that's not it. I I'm feeling all better. Actually, how are you doing? I am fine. It may take some more time to completely heal in my current state, but I'm still well above average. I should be evenly matched in battle so long as it's not against Berserker. I don't sense any pretension from her. She's simply stating the truth. I don't have any response to give. Saber's words may be encouraging to a master, but I still don't want a delicate looking girl like her to fight. I want to ask you something. Don't you have any goals other than fighting? Since you're here in the modern world, aren't, aren't there any things you'd like to do? Other goals? There is nothing else. Servants are summoned to fight, that is all. Anything else is futile. You have raised an irrelevancy. I figure. I'm trying to tell someone not to fight when their only reason for being here. When that, I'm trying to tell someone not to fight when it's their only reason for being here. It's not that I wanted to tell her that. But it's more like... Saber lacks humanity. That might be enough if fighting is all she's gonna do, but she's right in right in front of me, looking like an actual human being. It doesn't feel right for her to just fight. If Saber's gonna be here, we should at least do something she enjoys, or it'll all seem like it was in vain. Hey Saber, servants are supposed to be heroic spirits from the past, right? Then I've been about to ask her what she would like before she became who she was, who she is now, but I stopped myself. I cannot tell you my true name. During the day, Saber said that she was gonna, that was gonna be a secret between the two of us. So I wouldn't be surprised if Saber refused to tell me anything about her past. Shiro, it is not polite to stop mid-sentence. If the question is important enough, I will answer. Nah, forget about it. I was just about to ask a dumb question. I have burned my eyes and tried to change the topic. It really was a stupid ass question. I thought I wasn't interested in Saber's identity and Saber's been refusing to tell me because it's not safe. Breaking up something like this would just prove that I'm a bad master dwelling on unimportant stuff. What else can I talk to her about then? If I don't ask anything about Saber, the only other topics we left would be me. That would be even more pointless. I'm grasping at straws here. If I can't ask about her identity, I'll just have to ask about what Saber likes. What she wants to eat for breakfast tomorrow. I don't care if she's gonna look at me funny. I'm ready to ask all the futile questions I want. Shiro, 
If you do not have any I questions, may I ask something? Huh? Yeah, sure, what is it? It is about last night. You were wounded trying to save me from Berserker's attack. Do you remember that? I do, but what? You gonna keep belittling me like you had this morning? I get it was a rash decision on my part, so don't remind me. It makes me feel sick. I feel the same way. But there was something I would like to ask you to help me understand you as a better person. Shiro, why did you try to go up against Berserker? Did you not know what would happen if you got close? Well, I... Of course I knew. I knew getting near that thing would definitely be the end of me. Still, I tried to save Saber, not out of some foolishly optimistic belief I could. I just tried to save her. I didn't care about what would happen afterward. Saving Saber was my top priority in that moment. If anything, the fear of not being able to save Saber was greater than my fear of being killed. Sorry, I forgot why. It all happened so fast, so I can't really remember what I was thinking at the time. I was probably just rattled, otherwise I wouldn't have made such a suicidal move. Rather than tell her the truth, I just say something to try to get myself out of the situation. I probably did it because of how seriously Saber was looking at me. So you did it unwittingly. It wasn't unwitting. I told you I was rattled. Nothing like that happened again. I'm sure I would just be quaking. You may be right. That is a normal human response. No human would throw away their own life to try and save others. Even those who are later called heroes are no exception. Which is why, should I encounter such a person, I know they are lacking something. And if that person continued to carry on in that fashion, the only thing awaiting them would be tragedy. Her deep green eyes are trying to tell me something, and yet... Cut it out, Saber. I told you I was just frazzled. I'm scared to die too, so it's not like I can act like a saint. If something like that happened again, I'm gonna prioritize myself over you. I try to mask my anxiety by spouting a bunch of heartless crap. That is a relief. If this was all a misunderstanding on my part, then there's no, then there should be no issue. Yes, you are a coward, bitch nigga. As long as you do not choose to follow the wrong path, you should become a proper mage. Do I really look like a coward to you? Yes, very much so. Especially when you try your hardest to accept the situation in which you were placed. Do you not know that such prudence is sometimes called cowardice? It is no different than saying that one who does not know fear can never become a wise man. She seems relieved. Sebe even smiles as she says this. It must be because of how lovely and elegant everything she does is. I can't think of anything else to say. So Sebe and I spend the rest of our time alone in my bland room. And then night falls. I did not talk to Saber until Sock in the other room. And nothing much happened until it was bedtime. It's 11 now. The lights in the house are off and everything inside goes to sleep to prepare for the upcoming day. I can't sleep. Come on, man. I'm still lying on my side, eyes wide open. This is my room. I should be sleeping, but it feels completely different now. Damn, why can't I? It's quiet, but I hear Sabers breathing in the next room. I know. Of course, I can hear sound coming from the next room if it's quiet. And since I can hear her breathing, I find myself imagining Sabers sleeping for him. Damn it, how the hell can I fall asleep in this situation? I can't just stay in this whole bed of needles situation forever. I sneak out of my futon trying not to wake Saber up. Thank goodness. I thought Saber would notice, but I guess not. Unless she's a deep sleeper. I question whether she can really protect her master this way, but there's no immediate danger. If Severus had linked to Master, she would probably wake up immediately if her Master was in danger. So Sokka seems to be asleep. The lights in the detached building are out. 
he's either just that defined or she's on or she's naturally adaptable because so Sokka managed to blend in here in just a day well honestly it does help having her around yeah she's a handful but she's helpful one a bit of evidence is that band is wrapped around my hand hide my command spells huh I never would have thought to do that if it hadn't been pointed out the command spells master's bear appears someone on their arm Mine appeared on the back of my left hand. Clothes won't work to hide it, so I'll need to use bandages. Even if it looks a bit awkward. It's winter time, so I'll use some long sleeves to hide it. So Sokka has hers on the opposite hand from mine. Around the middle of her right hand or somewhere around there. The shape of the command spell is different for each master. And I don't think I'll ever see Tosaka's command spell. Silence falls over the shed. This is where Lancer cornered me yesterday, and where Saber appeared. The entrance is still open and it's pitch dark inside, as if to repel anyone who might try to enter. But this darkness, from, this darkness is familiar to me. I used to play here when I was young, and feel it to be my real room. It sits silently under the wintry night sky. I step inside. After closing the door to shut out the cold, I turn on the stove. Thought I would take a break today, but I shouldn't. The old man would be rolling in his grave if he knew I skipped my training two days in a row. I sit down in the middle of the shed and take a deep breath, deep breath. I should train, no pauses. Magecraft is a mental discipline to me, so I shouldn't skimp out on my training for no good reason. Breathe in. I begin my training by getting my breathing under control. The usual images pop into my head. The image of a sword drifts into my empty mind. I try to ignore it and clear my head. As soon as magical energy runs through my body, I begin my usual training. My strengthening magecraft succeeded for the first time in years when I was attacked by Lancer last night. I need to recreate that same feeling before I forget, or else it'll have been all for nothing. I close my eyes halfway and reveal the air from my lungs, or at least the air from my lungs. That's all I can do for now. As I concentrate, everything fades away. The Holy Grail War, Saber, Tosaka. If I allow my thoughts to slide into nothingness, any immature hesitations will fall away, and I'll finally be able to get good sleep, good nights. I'll finally be able to get a good night's sleep. <laughs> that's the end of the episode guys if y'all enjoyed like subscribe leave a comment i read them all tap into the next one uh unfortunately i didn't get any cgs for this episode huh if i'm being honest i might Hold on. Actually, I know what I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm glad I finished when I did. What I'm, I was actually like, literally, it's 12.40. I was about to drop the next bait episode at one. So like 20 minutes from now, I was about to drop it. But what I'm gonna do, since they're both relatively short and nothing really happened in this episode that I could really make a thumbnail from or a title, I'm just gonna edit this and I'm gonna group it in with the last one. And then that's gonna be it. So peace out. I love y'all tap into the next one. The first half of this video was recorded a, while, a little bit ago. Love y'all.